Hi, this is Lucia with The Art of Love. I'm a dating and relationship expert specializing in helping you get your ex back or to get over your ex. This week, I want to talk about a topic that I know you're going to be very interested in, and that is about having your ex beg and chase you, mastering the role reversal technique. Yes, it is possible. Isn't that what we all want when we've been broken up with? Or maybe sometimes when we had to break up with someone because they were taking us for granted or they cheated, we want them to come back begging. Well, it's possible. And in fact, I have this comment here from this woman. And she said, what do you do if they won't go away? (laughs) Three days, no contact, nine missed calls, three voicemails, edible arrangements to my workplace saying, I'm sorry, please call. She's really taking to heart my suggestion that you don't respond to uh, insignificant texts. And messages. One text about he'll leave me alone and he hopes to have a blessed life. Shut up. That's always a bluff, okay? When someone says, fine, okay, I'll leave you alone. Have a blessed life. They're just trying to get you to respond or to call them back. They're not, they ain't going nowhere, okay? <laughs> and then she goes, uh, and then he popped up at my house. Yeah, this is a bit excessive. I don't know if we want all that. I don't know, maybe you do. But as you can see, it is possible. So that is what we're going to talk about today. But of course, first, I want to welcome back my beautiful No Contact Army. Uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I am almost at 100,000 subscribers. And when I arrive, when I get there, I am going to be giving away five free 30 minute coaching sessions. And all you have to do to be eligible is you have to comment underneath the video that I post within 24 hours of it going up. And the only way to know when I've posted the video is to have the bell notification on my channel set up on your phone or your computer so that you'll know when the video is up because I'm not going to put it up as a premiere. Okay, so do that and you may be one of the lucky ones. And if you too would like to join our no contact army, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. And as I said, the bell notification. And to read our manual, go to nocontactsecrets.com where you can read two free chapters before purchasing the book. Okay, so how can you get your ex to beg you in the case like the woman in the comment? Or maybe not as much, if it's a bit too much for you. Or maybe it's not enough, who knows? Well, it's all based on interest level as I've talked many times before and I've learned about this through the wonderful late Doc Love and he is the person I learned about interest level from. He has a great book that I suggest you definitely check out if you want to know more about it. And the link to that is underneath every single video. The link to everything is underneath every single video, in case you're wondering. So when someone has a high interest, they can't control what they say and they can't control what they do. So think about what attracted you to them in the first place. When people start dating, they often stop their previous activities and they start to revolve their life around their partner. Now, this has to happen to a certain extent, but to totally intertwine and to totally stop your previous activities or really minimalize them is rarely a good idea. That's one of the things that made you attractive in the first place, the fact that you had your own life. And I'm always astounded at how many people say that after a breakup, they started working out again. Excuse me? (laughs) Why the hell would you ever stop working out in the first place? That's like bait and switch because you looked a certain way when you first started dating. Then you became lazy and you sat around at home and just wanted to watch TV and chill and eat. And then all of a sudden, after the breakup, now you kick it into high gear. It shouldn't take a breakup for you to continue going to the gym and keeping up your looks. So stop being so lazy. That way, If you are broken up with, you don't have to worry about not having any options because you let yourself go. If anything, your ex is actually going to worry because they know that you're a catch, but for whatever reason, they need to break up with you because you still look great. And who doesn't want someone who looks great? I mean, think about someone like Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie. Let's say you were dating them. Let's say we were so lucky as to be able to date them. So if they became needy and beta and annoying (laughs) in a relationship, a lot of people would probably break up with them, right? But even as you were breaking up with them, you know that they're a great catch. You know Brad Pitt is a great catch. You know Angelina is a great catch. And you know that some other person is gonna come along and snatch them up quickly, right? So you always gonna keep yourself 
a great catch. And if you're not a great catch, then make yourself a great catch by leveling up. Next, we have to talk about confidence. It's the number one quality that both sexes look for in a partner. And after a breakup, most people display behaviors that would show that they're anything but confident. It's not attractive and it doesn't raise interest level. And I know you don't feel confident right now. So I want you to keep in mind this war strategy that I'm about to tell you. And it is this. When you are strong, you must appear weak. When you are weak, you must appear strong. And this goes actually to all aspects of life, even in business, (laughs) especially in business. So right now you're weak and therefore you must portray the opposite, which means you must seem as if you're strong. You have to look as if you're accepting the breakup and you're moving on with your life. So your attitude has to be, I'm going to be stronger and I'm going to survive this. And if you focus on that, it'll come through in your attitude and and in your actions as opposed to, oh my God, this is the end of the world. I'll never find anyone just as good. So how do you become more confident? Well, one is to focus on the activities, as I mentioned before, in your life that were you were already doing that made you feel confident. Maybe it was working out, maybe it was painting, maybe it was riding your motorcycle. Whatever makes you feel alive is what you should be doing more of. And that goes for everyone in general, not just after not just people going through a breakup. So you want to focus on activities that make you happy and minimize activities that don't. And this is why I sometimes suggest to my clients that are having a very hard time with no contact to go on vacation. And that often helps to change their mindset because you're busy planning the trip, especially if it's to a place you've never been before. Then once you get there, there's so much to explore that you have less time to worry about your ex and whether you'll get back together or not. The second thing that will increase your confidence is time. As time goes by and you stay in no contact, you become more confident and you're also able to have some perspective on the relationship and on your ex's behavior Right now, you have them up on a pedestal, and as time goes by, you may be reminded of things they did that now turn you off, but at the time, you accepted it because your interest level was so high, and when our interest level is super high, we put up with more than we should, so as time goes by, you're able to gain more perspective on the reality of the relationship, and with that comes more confidence because you're being more realistic. Now, at some point, chances are that you will hear from your ex. And that will be the moment of truth. How are you going to behave? Are you going to give in to your fear that you'll never hear from them again and therefore respond to any breadcrumb they throw your way? Or are you going to be the new confident self and wait for something significant? Your ex can't beg you to take them back and chase you to get you back if you respond to every little message they send. That just tells them that they can have you back at any time. So there's no fear of loss, there's no scarcity, they don't feel like time's running out to get you back because you're available whenever they reach out. That's why I've implored you in so many videos to please not respond to breadcrumbs. A lot of you have done it, congratulations, and I'm very proud of you. And by the way, if you like what you hear so far, please remember to like this video so that the YouTube algorithm will show it to more people and we can help more people who are going through a breakup. Thank you. Now, most people cannot handle silence in general, not just silence that comes with no contact. And how do I know this? Well, let me ask you this. Are you able to stay home by yourself with absolutely no radio on or TV? I don't know if anyone listens to radio anymore, but you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Satellite radio. Most people are not able to do that. They have to have something on, the TV on in the background, even if they're not watching it, because they are uncomfortable with silence and they are uncomfortable with their own thoughts. That's why it's essential that you stick with no contact and not responding to breadcrumbs and let the sound of silence ring loudly in your ex's ears. And when you do eventually speak to your ex, if they're not trying to make plans to meet you after a little bit of chatting, you politely end the chat. I did a video on the topic of several of my clients who totally messed up by giving their ex hours and hours of their time when they finally talked to them, and I'll put that link in the upper right corner. So they either ask to get together or the conversation is over. Things now have to be done on your terms, not theirs. 
And I told a story in one of my early videos about a breakup that I went through many years ago where I begged the guy <laughs> not to break up with me. That was the first and last time I ever did that. And he called me back a couple of nights later just to check up on me since I'd made such a fuss when he broke up with me. And luckily by that time I had smartened up and I was a totally different person. I kept the conversation short and I said, yes, I'm doing great. I was just a bit shocked by the breakup, but I'm good now. Well, I have to get going. Have a good night. <laughs> Well, guess who wanted to see me again two weeks later? Haha. Uh -huh. That was many years ago, and we're now Facebook friends. So the power shifts when they see that you're no longer desperate, you're not begging, you're not crying, and you're not trying to get them back. Everyone wants a prize, and you can't be a prize if you're doing all those things and if you're responding to every little breadcrumb and coming across as needy and desperate to get them back. That's the total opposite of a prize. So fake it till you make it, as they say. Head up, shoulders back, and move forward in confidence, knowing that if you use the strategies correctly, the chances of getting your ex back are very, very high. So I want to hear from you. What have you been doing or what will you be doing from now on to raise your confidence and go back to feeling like your old self again, the confidence that you had before you met your ex? And in the meantime, if you would like my help to get your ex back, you can contact me at theartoflove.net. The direct link is below and we will send you the rates. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please rate and review. If you found the video helpful, please like, subscribe and share. And finally, remember that love inspires, empowers, uplifts and enlightens.